What's up YouTube? Mosey Designer here doing a third blueprint tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be covering how to make a sliding door. A uh, very simple uh, tutorial and very useful tutorial. So let's get started. So I'm going to go to my content browser and I'm going to go to content and starter content props SM door. So that's the problem I'm going to be using. So let's go to my blueprints, create a new class, actor, blueprint folder, all this slide, so sliding door example. Okay. Now I'm going to drag in a door. I call this left door. Then I'm going to drag in another door and call this the right door. Then I'm going to come to my editor and get this lined up properly. Alright. There's my door. Compile, save. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, add component, scroll all the way to the bottom, or somewhere in the middle rather, and you want under collision, box collision. And we're going to just make a collision component on this door stretch it out so it fits the door right about there should be fine let's stretch it vertically and we'll stretch it a little longer this way All right so basically what we've done is built a trigger inside of our blueprint so we don't have to build a trigger in the world Next, we're going to go to our event graph, delete all this, and I'm going to delete that box because it's in the wrong thing. I need to go to scene, uh, root, add a component, let's search for box again, sorry, repeating myself. Uh, the mistake I did was that the box was attached to the door but I want the box to be just separated. That's why I put it back into the scene root instead of being underneath as a sublevel of the door. Uh, so just be sure that you don't do that when you're making this door or another blueprint where you do not need an object to be nested. Anyways, getting off topic there. So that's a good size for my cylinder. No, uh, sorry, uh, box collision. And compile. And then I'm going to click on my box, right click, add event for box, collision, on begin overlap. Then I'm going to right click in my space here and do uh, add timeline. I call this uh, movement. Uh, left. And we're going to um, oh, we'll duplicate it later. So double click on this and I'll do create new float track. So this F in the corner. And um, in UE3, you could move doors with matinee, but matinee is gone in UE4, so there's things called timelines. So basically, we'll make a simple timeline with uh, three uh, keyframes. So add keyframe one right click on the timeline and we'll set the value, the time value to 1 and the value to, sorry, the time to 0 and the value to 1 and then I'll right click again and I'll set my time to um, 0.5 with a value of 0.5 and I'll come to 1 second, add a keyframe, just get exact, I'll type in at the time of uh, one second, I have a value of zero, 
and the length of this animation is one second and I will zoom to fit vertical zoom to fit horizontal so that's my full timeline right there very simple timeline so basically when I overlap the box move the object what object am I going to be moving I'm only moving the left door and what I'm going to be doing is uh, when you drag a pin off, type and set relative location. You could do set location. Well, I guess I got rid of that. That's good because if you don't do set relative location and you copy this door, it'll keep the location where it used to be, which doesn't make sense uh, without an example. So ignore that. We're just going to go to set relative location and then when my timeline is done I'm going to update that but what is my new location so I, what I need to do is tell blueprint move the door from point A to point B or from point B to point A so I'm gonna click on where it says new track drag out a pin and type in blurp vector Basically, I want to move it in a vector. A vector is basically, in physics, x, y, and z direction. And when the value I want to return is the new location of the door. So what do we actually put in for our values of a and b vectors? Good question. So the b is, let's say, our starting vector, where we want to go, and we want to go to a. So on my viewport, I'm going to select this door, the left door, and this, in the in the details, in location, you'll see the x, y, and z value. This is our starting position. So I'm going to just copy this value to my event graph. So b, the x value of b, the y value, copy that. And lastly, the z value, which is 0 now I want to move it in a certain direction. Which direction do I want to move it in? I'm going to move it in the Y, which is the green uh, arrow. I'm going to select this and drag it to as far as I want to do it. Let's say right about there. So that changes my X value to this and my Y value to this value. So it's copy pasting that and the Z stays the same. Now what I'm going to do is click on this, hit Control W and duplicate that. Just double click it, check. It's a one second keyframe. So I'm going to call this movement uh, right. And what I'm going to do is break out my overlap and do a sequence of events. So do one, do zero, then do one. This should work. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to get our right door, drag that in, pull off a pin, set relative location we're going to drag off a pin from new track 0 lerp uh, vector and now we need the values of that door we can hit the update to set relative location and let's go to my construction my viewport I'm going to set this back to normal I'm going to select this guy. So as x is 0, y is 90, z is 0. I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to start at 0, 90, 0. And then I'm going to move this to about here. 
that sets that to 0, 195, and 0. Copy that. Return value to the new location. Go back to my viewport. Set this back at 90 as my original value. Compile, save. So what I'm doing is this works when I step into the box. Open the left door, open the right door, set its value. So let's see what happens. Save. Minimize that. Delete that door. I'm going to go to my content blueprints, sliding door example, and paste it. And I'm going to do play. Before I do that, I'm going to minimize that. Let's walk up to my door and see what happens. There you go, it's slide open. But what if you want to close it? So we're going to do it on end overlap. Okay, so I figured out my mistake. I'm doing things a lot, a little more complicated than they need to be. I apologize. So let's just delete this whole door clo closed door sequence. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to break off the begin overlap from the top function. Click on the door of the box, add event collision and on end overlap and then we need a sequence and then the sequence 0 goes to reverse of the left sequence 1 goes to the reverse of the bottom now I'm going to create a boolean. A boolean is a true false value. So I'm going to do uh, add new variable and it's already set to a boolean and I'm going to call this door state. And drag it off in my world and I'm going to get the door state. I'm going to pull off a pin, create a branch and now this is my true false check. Now what I'm going to do is if it's true, do this. And then I'm going to create another one. Branch. If it's false, Do this. <clears throat> so let's spread this out a little bit. The wires are overlapping. So what I'm going to do next is now that I've cleared some things out is set the values of my booleans. So when I overlap the box, break that link get the door state, set the door state, and I'm going to set the door state to true. And then come to my branch and do the next steps. I'm going to break this in the overlap end, get, set my door state to false, set, go to my branch, and then do the next sequence. So this should fix the door opening and closing properly. There we go. So apologize for the mistake. Apologize for some of the delays. Had to think a little bit. That's the thing with Blueprint. You kind of have to sit and think. So let me go over what I did. Expand this out. Mm -hmm. 
things are getting a bit messy with my blueprint, but I will try to organize things here so we can follow along. All right. So the first thing I did is to fix my mistake is add a boolean. The boolean is, like I said, a true/false value. So when I overlap the box, I'm setting the door state to true, and I come to my branch, and I'm getting the door state, and since I set it to true, the branch goes to the true branch, goes to the sequence, and sequence one plays movement left, and then sequence uh, sequence zero plays movement left, sequence one plays movement right. And when that plays, I lerp the vector to the position I wanted to do it in, and I set the relative location of the door. Now when I end overlap the box and I leave the trigger volume that we have created, I set the door state to false, come to my branch, and now I'm getting the door state. Since I set it to false, it changes the, the value of the door state to false, making the, this branch false, goes to sequence, sequence 0 goes reverse uh, movement left, sequence 1 here goes reverse movement right. We'll flip these values and set the relative location of the door. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's go back and have our blueprint open. And I'll zoom out a little bit. You can't read the text, but you can follow along with the wires and see what's going on. So on overlap, set to true. and it open the door on end overlap door close overlap door state is true and overlap door state is false so there you go there's an example of a sliding door and just to add a little bit of polish I'm gonna add a door frame to this so let's see I'm going to go to my content browser And content, starter content, props, door frame. Let's scale this to about a two. And there you have it, a nice sliding door. Begin overlap, end overlap. Now the thing we did where we, we sorry where we set the relative val uh, relative location because we want to set the relative location of the door. I can plop plop in another uh, blueprint, the same door. I go to my content browser, content, blueprints, sliding door example. I'm going to put one over here in a different door frame. Notice I didn't I bring the door frame into the blueprint. Uh, one thing I learned while making games is just make the door and make the frame part of the level. So the, the frame will be built into the level. The sliding door is a separate actor that fits into the frame. Now, I have two doors. Oh, let me minimize all this stuff. So now I have two doors, and I've set the relative location. So if this is done correctly, each door will move in the same value, but in a different location in the world, because it keeps the same relative location, or the relative values we told it to do. So let's try door number one and door number two is not being affected at all. So that's good. Let's go to door number two. Opens, does not affect door number one. So basically, it is setting the relative location. So no matter where I place in the world, the values that I set to move it in the X, the, the Y value, my blueprint, 
no matter, so basically no matter what values what I whatever whatever value I told it to lerp to it was always lerp to that no matter where I place it in the world I'll place a third one down just for shits and giggles um, go back to my content browser sign door example number number door number three and you can put a frame on that just for polish don't need to but just consistency door number one we door number three door number two there we go so that's how you can set up a sliding door again just an overview of the blueprint don't want to waste too much of your time sorry I wasted some time with that mistake so we um, have our viewport we have our left door our right door and a collision box we go to our event graph on begin overlap and an end overlap begin overlap we set a uh, we create a door state variable a boolean we set the state to true we check if it's true and then we use our timeline to play the left movement and the right movement and we tell it which way to move based on lerping the vector, the x, y, and z coordinates of the door uh, from the viewport. And then we set the relative location of our actor left door and right door. When we leave our volume, our box, we set the door state to false. We check that it's false. We run a sequence. When we reverse the, the timelines of left and right, it lerps its vector and sets the relative location. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, and informative and you can use it for your own projects or practice uh, again I apologize for some of the delays in thinking and the mistake uh, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next blueprint tutorial thank you so much